Got some uh, meat. It's not cold. Not cold at all. In this case, 56. This one, 55. This one over here with the pork. We got to find out uh, what is connected to it as far as the racks go. You know, these never have uh, stickers on them at this at this location, at these grocery stores. For some reason they take the stickers off. I don't know why they would do that. You get to the back of the store and you come up. Stairs. Into the stoop motor room that's over there with these piece of crap racks that they have well I guess they're made by zero that's not too bad zero zone they okay but they're not the best uh, let's see rack a is frozen so it's not rack a rack C is that's one. Let's look at rack B. Rack B. Packaged meat B1. Probably B1. So, what's the first thing we check? Remember? Oh my god. Alright, there's B. Condenser. B. Zero. Liquid level. That's pretty bad. This ain't the rack we're working on. This is the rack we're working on. Looks pretty low to me. Now I want to shut some of these off to try to clear the sight glass for one. And two, see if my meat cases start getting lowered on temperature and three to see if my liquid level goes up when I start stacking the refrigerant and if it does if it shows up on the controller so I'll power these off and I know that's gonna work because these don't have EPRs look oh, where can I find it let's go look at this one over here this is a better opening right here Look, we're controlled by liquid line solenoid valves. So, 
that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can get the liquid line to respond. Not the liquid line, the liquid level to respond by shutting these off. Let's see. Needle moved a little bit, huh? Hmm. Oh, and we almost have cleared our sight glass. Got one compressor running, I think. Yeah, just one. For our meat case. So this thing needs refrigerant real bad. All right, so have a gander now. This one that was 55.9 has gone down. This one that was 56 has gone down. And this one over here that was 50 has gone down to 40 something because there's a four there. So we know that this is a refrigerant loss issue. We need to go get our leak detector and find the leak and we need to do it fast. Before I go get it, I'm going to turn everything back to how it was when I got here. I don't like vertical sight glasses. I like horizontal ones better. I, I just really don't like vertical ones. I think that they're not really legible or accurate. Para refrigerante, fuga. Ah, y pita tiene fuga. Sí, este, este, este máquina. ¿Y qué Evaporator here, an evaporator there, evaporator there, I think. I have to open it up and look, but that's what it sure seems like because my leak detector is only picking up in this cavity right there. They got it empty for me. I went and got refrigerant. I'm back. Now I'm gonna valve off that circuit. I'm gonna valve it off. 
and add refrigerant so that the meat cases can get back down to temperature. Then I'm gonna do a leak search, pinpoint the leak. You know what I'm saying? Valved off. Now I can add refrigerant. Fifty five, fifty four, forty six, forty eight, one of two. Make sure. Not to forget your tool. You really need your tool. And make sure that your compressors do all the refrigerant lifting for you. Don't carry refrigerant up the stairs. That's too much work. Use your head. Use the compressors to suck it all in down here. All right, so I've added 50 pounds of refrigerant to it, and I'm pretty sure that it needs more. My liquid line's running about 85 degrees. I think that I could add more refrigerant and the liquid line would continue to go up a little bit more. And then eventually once uh, it was full of liquid, all the lines were full of liquid and it started to stack the temperature would start coming back down and then that's how I know I would be above the zero percent threshold but let's go look and see what uh, the receiver is doing so I was right we still got liquid in there or bubbles not liquid it's still not a full column of liquid but it's improving so Look, oh, we got some, ugh, something. Did you see it? Did you see it? Let's look. Look, right there, oh, that's a little bit. Ah. Look at that tiny little spike, uh, point, point five percent. Look at that, ain't that cute? <laughs> okay. So I was right, I could continue to monitor the liquid line temperature, it's going to keep going up, and then it's going to stop, it's going to start coming back down, and that's how I know uh, I can, uh, I've added enough. Alright, so we're running between 84 and 85, this is the third jug. is going to start rising slowly which is which it is Now once it starts coming back down, that's going to mean that we got a full column of liquid and it is beginning to subcool the liquid refrigerant. And this one, leaking. Look, you see the oil? Yes, you do. So we find a leak.
so of all these cases, this one really struggled. It wouldn't go down below 46. This one hit below 30 is okay. That one did too, and then over here I've got a leak. Right under there. So I'm pumping the circuit down, repair the leak, change the dryer over there because I got a four degree temperature drop across that dryer.
That was a good one. Had enough playing cleanup. I've learned over the years exactly where to put the wet rag. Now don't go crazy and let globs of molten solder roll off the pipe and melt holes in your plastic drain pan underneath your work. every three minutes it's gonna record zeros again here in a little bit so we're gonna add another 50 pounds and this is jug number five Job number six. Go look at the receiver. So with 150 pounds added to it, we're 
bouncing between 0 and 15. So yeah, all the circuits are open. And our stupid vertical sight glass over here. Still flashing. And here's number seven. I don't know why that case is running so bad. And this one over here is running so good. And it's on the same circuit. Like I really wonder why. All right, so in closing tonight, because it's 9.15, pretty late. We got almost a 30% liquid level after 200 pounds. That's a little better than what it was earlier, yeah? And there's our graph from when we started at zero, then we added 100 pounds and 200. Now we're doing all right. I'm gonna let it run overnight like this. We'll come back tomorrow and work on that case that has the big leak that I isolated earlier. And the stupid thing still has vapor in it. That is some stupid, stupid shit. Finishing up here, about to leave. The temperatures on these things are all over the place. I'm gonna have to look into why that is more tomorrow. I gotta come back tomorrow and recheck check that, that case over there. But see, that one's 36. This one's 44. But see, that's not the temperature of the meat. That's coil temperature because those sensors are installed, are mounted in the coils. Be back tomorrow to take those sliding doors off that are in the, on the employee side over there. Take all that apart, expose all the, all the copper, the coils. We've got coils up top. And I don't know what we have on the bottom. I guess we'll find out.